Are there different types of gravitational waves? Because we have seen or we have detected kind of the gravitational waves generated by the merging of two black holes. But are there any other types of gravitational waves and what can we learn from each of those types? The, que the question is, are there any other kinds of gravitational waves? First of all, that's an interesting theoretical question because what we're doing is, um, and what we've seen, fits Einstein's theory of general relativity, but there's other theories. And so there can be waves that are theoretically different than what we saw, which is a particular kind that gives the analog of electromagnetic waves. So that there could be differences theoretically. The main thing is that there's different kinds of sources that can give gravitational waves. So I'll give an example. Um, and that is that uh, we're looking at black holes and uh, colliding. And that's very interesting because black holes are such a uh, fantastically interesting object themselves. But we have another pretty interesting object, and that is when stars collapse. Uh, stars live a long life. They keep us warm, our own sun. And then eventually they burn up all the fuel. And the fuel is basically keeping the star as we see it because otherwise gravity is pulling it in. It's kind of countering the gravitational pull. But when it burns up enough fuel, gravity wins and it collapses. And when it collapses, what is, what's left? It makes a much smaller body. And that body is usually, uh, unless the star is very big, is usually a neutron star. We call it a neutron star. And it's not a black hole. It's a, it's a very compact object made out of nuclear matter. So it's a particularly interesting state of matter in studying nuclear, what we're made of, nuclear matter in the most extreme conditions. But how can we study it? Presently, not very well. We find what we call neutron stars or pulsars in our galaxy. They're looked at with radio telescopes, but it just tells us that they go around at a certain speed and uh, it doesn't really tell us anything. If we see gravitational waves from uh, spinning neutron star, that also won't tell us very much. But if we can see the same thing we're seeing with black holes, that is a pair of neutron stars going around each other and then eventually losing energy to gravitational waves, spiraling in and colliding, then we've ripped apart in some sense this nuclear matter and seeing how it rips itself apart or, and converges uh, gives us information that we can use to, um, uh, to understand nuclear physics in a much more extreme way. So that's one example. Okay. And what about the origin of the universe? Could we yes. know something else? For example, if we measure something like the CMB but with the gravitational yes. waves? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So the, the, the question is one that probably the most, it's probably the most interesting question that by the way, we can't do with LIGO now, but maybe 50 years, 100 years, directly. Um, the, and that is to see gravitational waves from the early universe. Why is that so interesting? Because what we know about the early universe is pretty fantastic already. But what we study it, what we study again is electromagnetic radiation, microwaves. And um, basically, the those are... Fo those photons are absorbed in the early universe itself. We can only see them after the universe was, I don't know, 300,000 years old. So in order to get back to almost zero time when the Big Bang really happened, you need a probe that doesn't get absorbed. We have one because gravitational waves don't get absorbed. So if you can see gravitational waves from the early universe, we actually are probing back not to 300,000 years after, but uh, essentially the instant after the universe formed. So um, that's a very difficult experiment. One I think, I don't know, 100 years from now we'll be able to do. Uh, but the impact of gravitational waves on spectra that are seen with electromagnetic waves may be seen much earlier. And th that is the fact that there are gravitational waves there affect what gets observed in what we view after the 300,000 years. Uh, so there's an imprint that came from gravitational waves. And there's experiments now that are trying to see those, like an experiment called BICEP. Mm -hmm. And what's the time prospect for that? 
experiment, more or less? Uh, I don't know if it can succeed because uh, seeing the imprint requires finding some way for it to be smaller than the background. And so far, they haven't succeeded at that. So the time scales now are almost now. They're doing the experiment and improving on it. Uh, but it's not clear that the effect is big enough to see compared to the backgrounds that we have now. What would you say to someone who's about to start physics or who's planning to start a career in physics? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the personal tools, meaning enough understanding of mathematics, uh, enough intuitive understanding and interest in physical phenomenon, uh, so not biological but physical phenomenon, it's a fantastic field because what's better than understanding how nature works? and in our case, the physical world. The science that comes the really most basic in understanding how the physical world works, and that's what I've been talking about, although it may sound have sounded abstract, is physics. And in physics, you can pick problems that are uh, not quite as so fundamental that they're hard to know what they relate to, like gravitational waves, but things that are uh, questions that are much more close to practical phenomena. Uh, and so physics, you have the whole possibility of working on understanding the whole physical world. What's more interesting than that?